Hey everybody, I just got the lights up and running, and I'm hoping today is going to be the day I get in here and do some real serious work on my Garami tank. My truck's in the shop at the moment, and so I'm kind of stranded at home anyway today, and I think today will be my day. But I want to get a look at something. I want to establish a baseline now that the lights have just come on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about purling in a planted tank. Now, I've seen false purling. False purling is when you uh, trim your plants and through a fairly complex process of internal pressures and gas exchange and all that kind of stuff, you will begin to see gases developing at the tips of your cut stems and you'll see bubbles rising up from them on occasion. That is not purling. That, at best, could be called false purling. You can also get dissolved gases in the water sort of precipitating out of the water if you've got an air stone or you've got a lot of agitation, you've got say a, um, a hang on the back filter like this where the water is really you know hitting sort of a waterfall and dropping into the tank and it's carrying those little micro bubbles down into the tank with it. Uh, sometimes you'll get one of these canister filters where the surface skimmer will start sucking air and the spray bar will then start spitting out those little tiny micro bubbles and then you wind up getting these little micro bubbles starting to kind of attach themselves and you get what looks like purling. Now you'd think if that was going to be a common I'm trying not to freak these guys out too bad when I come walking around the corner because they can really injure themselves when they scatter but as you can see this tank you know, that's the recipe for exactly what I'm talking about, if that was going to be the case. And yet, when you look in here, you really don't see a lot of bubbles attached to anything or, you know. So that, I don't think, is necessarily what we're going to be looking for. This is the other tank I want to look at, and we're going to come back uh, a little later and pick this video back up to see what's going on. But do you see the few little bubbles that you can already see developing on that bright green. Now I'll grant you that cyanobacteria, but cyanobacteria is, well, it's sort of like a symbiotic relationship between bacteria and algae. It does generate energy through photosynthesis, and if you've got photosynthesis going on, then you've got CO2 being broken down and you've got oxygen being produced. So it's behaving exactly like a plant in those regards. And in this tank, I just recently um, put new lights on it. So we have a lot higher intensity lighting than we used to. And what I'm finding is by the afternoon, I'm seeing the, all that bright green, which is going to be the most actively growing plant in the tank, is going to be the cyanobacteria and or algae. And off of that, we will probably be seeing lots and lots of little bubbles by this afternoon. And that's when we're going to come back and pick this video back up. And hopefully, we'll get a chance to see something that looks very much like purling. And I'm wondering if that's not actually what's going on. Because what purling is, I know a lot of people think that it's a lot of... CO2 in the water that gives you purling, and that's part of it. The plant has to have an adequate supply of CO2 in order to be able to produce a lot of growth and therefore generate a lot of oxygen to put into the water. However, the, C the, the, the waste gas from the plant, the oxygen, will simply dissolve into the water and you won't see bubbles forming on anything. The reason you see bubbles forming is not because you've got bucket loads of CO2, it's because the plants have produced bucket loads of oxygen, and the water is oxygen saturated, and all of the new oxygen that's being produced has nowhere to go. It can't dissolve into the water because the water is saturated, and so you wind up getting the the you know the next little oxygen molecule that appears just sits there too and then the next one that comes out of the pore uh, of the plant you know basically the plant breathing out expelling that little bit of gas it doesn't go anywhere and it just accumulates and accumulates and eventually so many of those oxygen molecules accumulate that you can physically see bubbles of atmospheric oxygen of gaseous oxygen 
And so that's what's happening. Your your tank is actually oxygen saturated, and the bubbles, the, the, the waste gases from the plants just have nowhere to go, and they start building up, and that's when you get all these little bubbles. So you can get purling in a tank that's not CO2 injected, but you still have to have a lot of CO2 in the air in order to get the plants to grow that vigorously. And as I've discussed on many occasions, there's my little CO2 sniffer. And right now we are looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I might have lost count there. So we've got either eight or 900 parts per million CO2 down here right now. And I haven't even really been down here yet for the day. I haven't turned my little lamps on. You know, I've got some little oil burning lamps to take the chill off the room in the other room. And that's just a source of CO2 being generated down here. And of course, being in the basement with the CO2 being a heavy molecule or a fairly dense molecule, they tend to settle down in low and confined spaces like basements. And so we've got elevated levels of CO2 down here. And I really think that contributes to all of my luscious plant growth in all of my tanks because I don't feed or fertilize or inject CO2 or anything into any of my tanks. I just do water changes and let them go. The fish poop is basically my food. And I know that's not necessarily a well-balanced food, but it's the food I leave for my fish. So we're going to go ahead and pause it here. And then, as I said, we're going to come back and we're going to check this tank in a couple of hours. And we're going to check my gudgeon tank in a couple of hours because these are the two that I've been getting most of that. We're going to call it purling for now, but once we get a little bit of it on video, we'll be able to get a little better look, and somebody that maybe knows a little bit more about it than I do uh, can throw their two cents in. So hang on. I'll see you in a few hours. All right, everybody. Here we are much later than I anticipated. It has been a hectic day, and unfortunately, I just found out that the transmission in my truck is toast. So don't really know what I'm going to do. I've been spending most of my day trying to figure out how I'm going to get a new vehicle and so on and so forth. So I've not had time to get down here and have not really been thinking too much about this tank. But I did want to come down and do a follow up on what I started talking about this morning. And I wanted to check and see if we had uh, any of that purling that I was talking about. So I've looked around a little bit and I don't see a whole lot so once again i'm not sure if what i'm seeing in here is purling or if it really is just a few random bubbles that develop i tend to notice most of it along the back i tend to notice most of it where it is closest to the light and all of these are indicators that it is indeed caused by photosynthesis and that would be purling so this is all scummy and thick. It's got all that algae growing in it. So I don't know if we're getting any bubbles developing on the surface there. Um, it looks a little foamy, a little bubbly, like that's kind of kind of scummy, foamy stuff you see on swamps. Uh, that's basically what's going on. Same thing. It's you know just the oxygen being produced at such a high rate that it just builds up. So we got a little bit of that going on in this tank. And if we come over here. Try not to freak everybody out. Got a lot more of it going on in this tank, but this tank is a little less definitive as to whether that's not just air bubbles that are collecting on it from the circulation in the tank. If we look up here, we can see there's a lot of air bubbles on the surface. And while I'm not really getting a waterfall effect, I am getting enough of a downward force that you can see plenty of those little bubbles are being brought down into the tank and swirling around in the water column. So it's entirely likely that we are literally just getting little deposits of bubbles that are building up. It's just little micro bubbles. Uh, it is also possible that because of all that vigorous um, surface exchange, you know, that gas exchange at the surface, we possibly have full oxygen saturation. I don't know. I'm tending to doubt it. The more I'm looking at this, the more I'm tending to not think that that is actually purling, that that is just air bubbles that are accumulating. So I don't know. We will keep an eye on it. We'll look at it some more. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm not going to have time to get to dealing with these tanks today. Obviously this tank is a, a little less of a priority than my 
uh, grommy tank over here. This one is just so disgusting looking. Again, I want to reiterate that the water is fine. I did a filter change recently. I've done a big water change recently. I'm not worried about the health of the fish or the, um, you know, the, the, the water parameters or anything like that. Uh, the water is fine. It just looks nasty because of all that algae in there. And frankly, algae is just plants growing. So effectively, this is just a very vigorously planted tank. My chief concern would be that uh, in planted tanks, while they produce oxygen during the day, the plants actually use oxygen during the night. And so if you don't have enough water flow and enough air circulation at night, then you can actually get a really steep reduction in uh, oxygen levels in your tank overnight in a planted tank. So this is a heavily planted tank. And I did have issues when I blacked the tank out before I lost a fish and not really sure why, not really sure what kind of chemistry uh, shifts I went through or whatever, but I blacked the tank out for a few days and when I turned the lights back on, I had a dead fish. So, a little too coincidental for me. It wasn't like I had a random dead guppy. It was my Royal Farlowella catfish that died when the lights were out for a few days. So clearly there's enough vegetation in this tank that it's enough to shift the water chemistry during dark periods. So, you know, I do need to tend to it, but it's nothing urgent. It's just it's a matter of how it looks more than uh, a concern for the safety of the fish. So I got to get back to doing what I was doing, uh, trying to sort some stuff out, as I said, and get this all kind of figured out um, and get that back on track. So I'm going to say thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry we didn't get to the actual water change uh, in this video, but I promise it's coming up soon. I really do want to get to this tank. And as it looks now, I'm going to be stranded at home for quite a while, uh, longer than I was anticipating. I thought a day or two, and it's probably going to be a little longer than that now. So we are going to have plenty of time to get this tank taken care of. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget this one is my Garami tank. Hope to see you real soon in the next one.